All right, what's up? What's up? This is <laughs> this is the Boomer Crew. I got Victor here. Uh, we got eBay J here. But I just want to say something real quick. Uh, if you don't see Rick here, please keep him in your prayers, people, because he is in the hospital. Okay, he's battling out with the cancer thing, and uh, he had some back problems. So we just wanted to uh, kind of acknowledge that. And our prayers and uh, love is for that dude, because he's part of the crew. And anyway, so with that, with that along, I had some other videos we we're putting up, but they didn't get up because they weren't being processed through. I was using a different editor, and then when I pushed it to YouTube, it wasn't getting processed correctly. So those will get up along with this There's as well. I just said I messed up, man. Can I be diplomatic? About it? Tell the truth. I messed up. Vote, I messed period. up, but I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know it wouldn't go to YouTube. So there you nah, go. That, that, that's an excuse for everybody. Well, I didn't know. And and Victor's going to be coming into Chicago, so we're going to be doing some videos, and we're getting his silly rear end over here. So you'll see some real footage. <laughs> I like to thank Mo Money for, <laughs> hey. for, for, for sending me to Chicago. Mo Money, Mo Money, Mo Money. <laughs> and we got a topic here from Midwest King. We give a shout out to Midwest King 100. Thanks, brother, for your, uh, your topic you gave us. How to date in 2021. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But first of all, um, I want to talk about giving blood. How many have given blood this, this year? Not me. Not me, and I won't. I used to give blood. I gave blood almost every year. Yeah, I used to give blood, too, but I never... You, did you say you gave plasma, though, didn't you? No, uh, they wanted me to... My wife had a good idea to go get plasma, so we were going to go give plasma. And, dude, don't do it. <laughs> Just the questionnaire alone is going to make you turn around and say, forget this is well, goofy. I'm not doing this. Well, that's why I told you when we talked before, I told you, I was like, have you done it before? Because I heard that it takes you out a little bit. Um, well, they say there's some side effects, but um, the creepy part was this. I don't got no problem with getting stuck with needles in the military. We got stuck with needles. That's not the big thing. The big thing is the questionnaire. That's the scary part because they ask you so many. I it's mean, they one of the questions. Let's you know one of the questions there, my friend. So some of the questions were, um, they okay. So some of them were okay. Did you have, did you have ever have tattoos? Did you ever have um, um, hepatitis? Um, have you ever shared needles with someone? Have you ever bought drugs off the street? Have you ever had a list of uh, sex so, where you paid for sex? No, so seriously. all the questions that you answered yes to or what? That's right. That's what's good. <laughs> Have you ever had Rollo in your mouth? <laughs> Dude, they asked you about oral sex. That was so, I mean, and constantly like, don't lie to us. <laughs> like, but not with just a wife or a spouse, but with, a, you know, out by it, the dumpster. Day, you just didn't know. <laughs> Maybe you were like they're trying to like you know compare Dude, compare I you to the way they 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 have, Then they said, "Okay, well, hey, if you get third party, if uh, if there's a third party, if there's a country, you know, outside of the U.S. that wants to probe our records, is it okay with you if they do that?" I'm like, hell no, that ain't okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> so we're going through this. Then I'm starting to look. Then I'm starting to look around because, man, I'm telling you, the sexual questions were off the chain. I'm thinking to myself, what the heck? You know, I mean, dude, they wanted to know what everything you did. Did you eat somebody? Well, yes, yes, those first three questions, man, you're a prime candidate for Singapore. <laughs> was that part of the? Was that part of the? Have you have you eaten somebody's butt? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying. They asked that, dude. Did you pay for sex? Have you pay, have you gotten drugs off the street? I was like, oh, <laughs> no. I mean, you know, dude. They asked. I would be in trouble on those. 
I'm be like, you what I thought. I thought to myself, man, if I answer this, are somebody going to come up from behind me and grab me and say, oh, yeah, it's him. <laughs> But there's a guy that's going to be like a girl dressed like a, a, a guy dressed like a girl say, hey, Ray, you're mine. You got Dude, room three. Then all of a sudden, it was the, the staff. Now, I don't want to dog anybody's staff, but this staff was like, hey, yeah, here, oh boy, sit down here. We're going to check which vein you got. And they're checking veins, and they're like, oh, the left side, the left side, the left side's a good one. It's the happiest place on earth. And I mean, they were just way too happy. I'm thinking to myself, this place is. And then all of a sudden, I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to do this. Then I start getting a headache. And I don't want to do this. And then, my, and then my wife comes up to me because we were separated. She was on the other side of the thing. And then she comes up, and I think it was the uh it was the 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 question thing that got her too. <laughs> She didn't read it like I was reading. She was like, well, I just kind of glanced over that and just hit no, yes, no. And I was like, glanced over? How could you just glance over that? <laughs> I said, I got to know, what are they asking me? And then all of a sudden, I'm thinking, you didn't hear about eating people's rear head or, you know, <laughs> this, that, and the other thing. Have you been with the same sex? She's like, they just asked you all that? I was like, what, what question hey, did hey, you get? Hey, Ray, what if they just asked you that? And her question was like, what? I know that's what, what I was kind of, dude. What I kind thought of that flowers too. do you like? <laughs> like? What kind of flowers do you like? You know, do you like sunny days? Do you want like walks in the park? <laughs> dude, that's what I was thinking. I thought, man, these people act like we're going on a date. <laughs> so then all of a sudden, I said, uh, I, I was, I was, I was dumbfounded. I started looking around of the other people that were there, and I thought, okay, hey, maybe, maybe they were profiling you, and you just looked like one of those guys. I, all I'm telling you is this: is that all of a sudden I start real feel real uncomfortable, and then my wife comes over and she goes, and the first thing she said, "Are you are you sure you still want to do this?" I was like, "Hell no, I don't want to do this." <laughs> And I'm waiting in the line still. I'm like, hell no. I took the little test they said. I'm like, ah. Oh. In fact, they wouldn't let me go any further because I answered a no to some or not sure or something like that. Not sure what this means. And so it messed up the whole thing. I had to what wait the around. What the hell was that question on that one? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you don't want to say, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Dude, I wouldn't have told you the other question if I thought it was something I wouldn't have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have been a really good one. Dude, I'm telling you, it was just ridiculous. And then I thought to myself, I want, I don't want to be here. I'm getting a headache. She comes over to me. She's like, hey, do you want to do you? And I knew right away, oh, she don't do this either right now, you know? I was like, all right, cool. Let's get out of here. I said, man, I'm out of here, dude. I don't want to do this. this when you were leaving. We walk out, we just start laughing about the whole thing because it was ridiculous. Yeah, but what did they say? Huh? They had to be keeping an eye on you. What were they saying when you left? No, we told them. We said, hey, listen, we won't decline all this stuff. We don't want to do it. Oh, okay, okay. But, dude, the way they were turning people out, they this thing was like a – it was like a cattle drive, you know? Yeah. Those, I mean, you know, like – Huh? I mean, a lot of people that do that – um, you know, not that they're strung out, but a lot of them I, are. I'm thinking that's exactly where it was going. And uh, I mean, I it's don't, I don't like want a blood draw. You know what I no, mean? No, no. This is like almost like a dialysis kind of thing going. It on. was dialysis. They had to, it looked like the dialysis machine right. that goes like it takes it out, puts it back yeah. in. Um, and yep. uh, so a lot of these people, I mean, not to say that some people just need the money, so they're they right. need, you know. And I think that's what it was. I think it was, a. I, I just really feel it's kind of that, you know what I mean? You know, a lot of people, you know, people time do. I cry, you know what? Hey, I don't yeah. mind helping and somebody saying, hey, man, we're going to give you a little gift or whatever. But it was the thing, like, I started thinking about, I was like, man, these questions are just out, like, out of control, man. I, <laughs> I thought, man, oh, man, here, here's, here's what I look like naked, okay? <laughs> Is that what you want to know? <laughs> I'm like, ah, Lee, dude. Man, that's crazy, dude. It was nuts, man. Don't do it. And don't do it or really think <laughs> about it real hard before you do it. Or make sure you read everything before you do anything. Then they talk about, hey, 
you can die. I think about three or four questions at the end of the little, you know, explanation of the question. Yeah, you know, this could this could result in death. Okay, and then da 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 da. This could result in death. Da 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 da. da this could result in death. I'm thinking, wait a minute, man. You said die three times. I'm done. <laughs> I said, for oh man, people who eat somebody's butt, they're gonna die. <laughs> hey, you should have read those. You should have read those questions first, and it was <laughs> go to the end of the thing. They, they won't let you. It's like a, it's like a little screen that you. Okay, the way they do it is number one. They gotta, you gotta go. You sit for fifteen minutes before you even get called. Then when you get called, they say, okay, we were gonna, they're gonna prick your finger to check your blood to make sure that you have enough protein in your blood so that you can donate plasma, yeah. whatever. But when they start talking about third party and over, you know, other countries coming in to get, you know, to take this information, are you okay with that? I'm like, hell no, I'm not okay with that. I said, wait a minute, you guys want more than plasma. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, they it's all a lot of it goes to research and uh well, that's what they said research, but they had the name of the company. Yeah. And I told my wife, I wrote it down. I said, we gotta check out this name of this company before you do anything. Oh yeah, because they now it's yeah, it's all data. They they all they want the that's data. What I mean. It wasn't about you getting you're helping, you know, you're this is going to one certain person or you know a certain class of disease or whatever. They're actually using it for I started thinking, man, what are you creating coronavirus again, or what are you guys doing back there in the back, man? It was just freaky, dude. Yeah, I, I, uh, Man, I wish I was there with you. I would have been laughing. Well, uh, oh, that's I'm why a lot, of the, a lot <laughs> of those places, a lot of those places are like in low income areas too. Well, um, <coughs> the area I wasn't really on. I, re, I don't. I don't know the area. I know the the suburb, but I don't know that area of the suburb. So when we were there, it didn't seem like you know too bad. Yeah, it didn't that seem like it was run down or anything, mm -hmm. but it did seem like the people that I started looking around were like, all right, these guys are these guys are needing something besides me blood. So I was like, oh man, I'm done. We're like, man, these guys look like my friend in the 80s. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you right now, when we walked out, we both started laughing because we we're like, what were we thinking? <laughs> well, your, your your intentions were good. I mean, you're oh, trying, yeah. you want I mean, you want to. Wanna she was help. talking about giving blood. I was like, yeah, okay, you know, I'm not going to. And then she's like, plasma. And I'm like, well, I think I did that already. But I didn't. It was the other one. It was, I was at the blood draw place closer to here. And then they asked you, do you want to give, um, oh, what was that other? What was that other thing they, they um, I know it wasn't brains because they wouldn't accept plate, you. Platelets, platelets. Oh yeah, oh, well, that's that's Alex. blood. That's that's blood. I mean, that might be a different yeah. kind of. It was platelets. I, I forget yeah. what they called it. Anyway, so then they put me on one of those machines where they draw it out and put it back in. But I mean, and that took a little while. But they, it wasn't nothing like. I mean, the questionnaire. I mean, this was like four or five years ago. I mean, the questionnaire wasn't cl even close to this, but. What I'm starting to see is that it's not a medical facility. It's just a company. It's a, it's a business. Does, exactly. It's just so a you might have give you might have given plasma there, and they just wanted the plasma. Right. And uh, this place is a business, and they're, you know, trying to make more money off your uh, survey. Yep. More money data. off the survey. What do you the mean? Data. The data that you put, they're trying to use it for some kind of like, uh, you know, they're accumulating some kind of a uh, graph or something. Dude, these were, this was deep questions. I mean, no, not even <laughs> playing. <laughs> I'm not even playing. I'm thinking about why I'm like, I was never with no guy. And she's like, you got that question? I was like, do you did? I said, ah, oh. she was like, well, I didn't really read it. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Oh shit! <laughs> Older man, it was. No, you don't. You don't. Sorry, man. We can't take it. They would have took you. You would have been like, "Oh shit, why me?" 
Exactly. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. But anyway, what else is on the agenda? We're supposed to talk about women. Yeah. Bow legged women. <laughs> well, I know a bow legged guy, cousin George. Yeah, I wonder what happened to cousin George. I don't know. He's probably sitting down somewhere bow legged. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe he's a. Uh, maybe he's the one that commented. Maybe that's him. <laughs> yeah, Midwest, Midwest King One Hundred. <laughs> Are you cousin George? <laughs> yeah, well, all right. So let's talk about it. 2021, dude, you want to know about dating. People want to know about how to date in 2021. Just go to dude, TikTok. I want to know how to date in 2021. And yeah, no kidding. Victor is probably the best to ask at this question because he dates right now in 2021. Where Yeah, in a virtual, a virtual yeah. world. Yeah, I'm the I'm the wrong person to ask. Yeah. I've been married already for 30 years. Has it been 30 years? I don't yeah, know. I, it feels it feels like that. I don't well, you've been married longer than I have. I, I think, think I I think it's uh 99? 27? Okay, yeah, you've been yeah, more than me. Yeah, I've been married for 27. Huh? No, all at once. Don't add them up. <laughs> Hey, I'm still legally married. <laughs> so you can't date then? Yes, I can. Uh -huh. But your Texas laws are different, aren't they? No, it's like it's like no, it's like the clause. There's a clause like when you go to church and they ask you if you want to take the bread. See, the right before there, there's a clause. Remember, I told you before when I used to whatever. But <laughs> the clause is you say, okay, everybody. Who has a sin can now repent, and that's when you stay silent and act like you're like repenting. And that act like it. Act. <laughs> no, that's that's when you repent. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's when you repent, and all your sins are given away, and then you can take the little wafer, okay. the body of Christ, and the wine, whatever it is. So I ain't been to church in a while. There's, there's several different ways of of dating today. Right. So one of them is face to face. The other one is there's Bumble. There's the, the dating apps. Yeah, Have you ever internet. did a dating? Yeah, but you still got to be face to face, don't you? On the dating app, not really. You're just texting people back and forth. So you never see the person like in real? You know, I'm sure you never see their unless, real picture. I mean, I'm unless sure they, they say, yeah, they want to take you. You want to go out with you. Ah, they don't want to go out with this guy. <laughs> so now, then they just to say mm -hmm. any single women out there you get more than this baby there's a lot more <laughs> you can see the right now there's a lot more baby yeah there is there are any guys any people watching out there have a cute a cute mom or a cute somebody <laughs> over five I'm here Single so, ready to bingo, baby, right here. Mingo baby, right here. Hey, Victor. Victor. Yo. Who yeah. has two thumbs and ready to mingle? Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was not the answer. I guess not. Yeah, you got to <laughs> say this guy. <laughs> so, okay. So, there's also the digital way. I think you know the best about the digital way, Victor. Yeah, right now I'm in an actual virtual. I have a virtual, there is virtual girlfriend. relationships. A virtual Ooh, girlfriend, baby, right here. This guy, Avakin Life. Midwest 100. It's jump on there, Riffraff 100. No, Riffraff 002. Befriend me. Really? There, there was a 001 that you couldn't take? <laughs> no, I had 001, but I forgot the password. <laughs> I'm oh, not there too, but don't click on that one. You got to lie. So, so what's what's the draw to Avakin Life? What do you do on it? Well, basically, you meet people around the world, and basically, everybody on the other side is a true person. Um, but what so is it? It's like a way, like to 
you know, like right now, especially with COVID, it got real popular due to the fact that, you know, you meet actual people, you actually talk, you actually can dance, you buy little, you know, outfits and stuff like that. But the other person that's on the other side is an actual person, so you get to know. So it's more know. like Avatar the movie, right? Yeah, it's like Avatar the movie. Yeah, you got well, an Avatar. Well, yeah, it's, it's like that in a way. Like him, yeah, yeah. He, he goes into like that other realm. Or yeah, the Matrix. Exactly like you go into another realm <laughs> and, you know what I mean? And, hey, if anything, you, you're able to talk and you're able to uh, communicate you're, with somebody real. You're socializing. Well, you're socializing, and yeah, and it gets you away. I guess you know a lot of people say, "Oh my God, I'm depressed on that," and then there you could like live another life and do things. And I mean, it, it, I think it does help people mentally because especially oh, with it, the it cures depression. Was, Advocate huh? cures depression. I think it, it, it. I don't think it'll cure it, but will it help it? Yeah, a lot because it would help it due to the fact that you're actually talking to real people, and I mean. In that reality, you could, and there you could have thousands of friends. You know what I mean? It's just like how many what, friends have you had since you've been on there? Huh? How many friends have you had since you've been on there? I've been up to four thousand. Four thousand? <laughs> yeah. This guy is cool. That's why. But you didn't know everybody. I talked to everybody. Yes, once at least once or twice. You talked to four thousand people. It's cool. What happens is that you'll, you'll, you'll meet people, but people will, will literally find boyfriend, girlfriend. They get married on there. It's like they have families. They have virtual everything. You know so what you I mean? Have a, do you have jobs? Everybody have a certain thing they have to do? I mean, you, you get money, but it's like, you know, it is. I'm, I'm not saying it's pay, uh, paid a, to like one of those pay games. No, right. You do it, have to like. You know what I mean? It's like everything else. It's like uh, everything comes into like who has the best house, who has who's dressed the best, who's especially girl wise. Girls are, are are spending money a lot, I think, more than guys because they actually buy dresses. Like for guys, there might be maybe like two hundred outfits, but for a girl, there's like ten thousand outfits. I mean, you can literally never see all the outfits you know what i mean so do, you, do you have like nine thousand outfits i have more than that when, well, I, <laughs> no, not me. I don't i don't have that many outfits but i mean i've seen girls that actually yes they have ten thousand outfits on oh. their uh, profile they have and i'm not gonna say i mean you you make up everything it's like you make your face you make your nose you make everything so I mean, some of the girls on there, I mean, you look at them and they're like NNs. They're that good. You know what I mean? So, I mean, uh, do you get attached? People say, well, how can you get attached to an actual video game or whatever it is? But you got to realize the person on the other side is a real person. So, yes, you're talking. It's like you do get like uh, a little bit emotional sometimes. Like I've been hurt. I've been married and got cheated on. <laughs> I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. But no, that thing, and you say, oh, well, how can you get attached to something like that? But you do. People have feelings. People get involved. You talking to this person, you know, like, you know, you ask a question, like, what do you do? Where do you live? How you been? All that. Now, and could it be a guy on the other end? Hell yeah. <laughs> but you, but. You're, that's what's the other weird thing is that, okay, if it is a guy and your mind thinks it's a girl and you go get emotionally attached, you know? Hey, do, it, do you guys, do you guys believe in, uh, what's that, love and first sight? <laughs> well, um, I think, see, that's the thing about that game. That proves that, yes, because everybody looks at the actual character first. Now, the character what, is going to bring what if, on. What if everybody is like, lo reaction. love at first sight for a woman, but what if you just haven't re met the right man yet? You know, you never know. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I guess if, well, I mean, you'll know by now. <laughs> I mean, dude, I mean, me, I mean, if I knew I was like that, I would, it's a little too late for me now. But I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you really want to put out your fantasies, 
a lot of people actually, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, gay, trannies, everything on there. There's everything on there, you know? Wow. I mean, there is no limit. I mean, there's no limit. I mean, it's, it's a fantasy world. You can make yourself to be whatever you want. There's no, like, and there's no pressure. You know, like in real life, you might say, oh, well, I can't do that. And there you can, you know? Now, how's, how's the closest you came to meeting somebody on there? Closest? I, I've gotten where I really don't want to meet nobody because, uh, I don't know, I just feel that. Because you draw the line there, right? <laughs> the, the reason why is that. Uh, I draw the line right there. there. No, the, the reason is that you have, uh, most of the people are, you know, like, far away there's rarely that you find somebody like even in texas you know what i mean people that are all over the world and you know that relation is really not going to happen you know what i mean i mean i'm there i'm cool you know like, and, I, and i don't lie i tell them the truth okay yeah we're here we're doing it here or whatever like we're living here in this little realm but in real real i'm re, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a realistic it's not going to happen because, you know, you're in London. Unless she's going to say, hey, babe, I'll pay for your ass to come out here. I'll be like, well, okay, you know, send the money. <laughs> but reality, you know, reality is not going to be like that. It's be... And, and, but I ain't going to, now, I want to ask you guys that are married now, if you get on there and you have a chick, is that cheating? I would think so. Really? Why? Because yeah, you, you get emotionally attached. Because yeah, you get emotionally you, attached. You, yeah, you you're said. never going to meet the person. You're, you're really in that world. Once you click out of that world, you're, that's it. You're done. Yeah, but emotionally, you gave something that was precious. But how about if you just did it with for fun and not emotional? <laughs> well, that's but the I difference. Mean, I mean, can't, you know, because it, like, I say. Wanna, I don't want to imagine having a girlfriend. So if I don't want to imagine, yeah, I mean, okay, I'd rather, I rather kill zombies on a game like that game I got where you're flying a helicopter killing zombies and stuff than to do a game that, you know, is I mean, I play those kind of games too, but sometimes <laughs> you do need that, uh, that social, you know. Yeah, I don't social. know. I, I think having a girlfriend right now would be scarier though. I don't know. <laughs> Well, see, and that's the thing. Nowadays, I don't know. I, I, well, I haven't dated for like, I have never dated in my life. I always had somebody. And I never looked for anybody to get somebody. So I don't know how you get somebody. You know what I mean? mean you've dated in your life. Oh. You had girlfriends? You dated? Oh, but uh, I have too many girls. It's not like, I, it's not like my game. I had a girl friends, but I never went up to a girl and said, hey, uh, do you want a date or you go out? Or, I mean, go out. I, I gone out a lot of millions of times, but I have never approached a girl and told her. They always approach me and say, hey, I want to be your girlfriend. And then I I see, look and say, OK. You got it like that, Victor? Man, you, you're a chick magnet. You look, I ain't going to lie. He would think, whoa, look at this guy. He's talking bullshit, but you know it. I, how many times? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I always, I don't know what it is, dude. I should look out. I think. So, but so you, if you I just ever to go like to a bar and approach somebody and said, hey, you know, you want to go out or I don't so even have, know how to do that, dude. I've never done so, that. So, have you ever, so you've always said yes. You have you ever said no? Yeah, I said no a lot, a lot, like probably like shit fifty times. Well, it's, it's a lot. It's cause ah, it's just my life is too crazy. But uh, yeah, I used to have like well, cause I was in the military, you meet hundreds of girls, like they say, you know, you know, you, in every port, <laughs> in every fucking city, in every you know, there's humor. 
California, yeah. Philippines, everywhere you meet somebody. Yeah, Vic, Victor would have filled out that uh, that plasma test, and the first question would have been, "Have you ever been to the Philippines?" And he would have said yes, and they would have said, "Go home." Can you give me the harder one? Because this was way too easy. <laughs> The crazy thing, they never asked about that country. They asked about Germany. They asked about France. They asked about all those other places. Germany, uh, like in Europe, Germany. UK, the UK, Germany, that parts of Europe. They never asked why, about... Why that? Did you say why? Huh? They asked for all those countries and not anybody else? No Thailand, no, no Philippines? No Asian <laughs> countries, man. I'm, I'm telling you, it was the weirdest thing. I couldn't figure it out. I'm thinking to myself, why? What did they ask about you UK know? and about uh, Germany? What's that? What was have you been, how long have you, have, from these dates to these dates, how long were you in, if you were in Germany, how long, uh, were, was it over six months? So I was what able to you? answer no, because I was under six months. Hmm. But I was like, when, holy cow. When were the, when were the dates? 1980 to nine, uh, was it 83 to 83 to um, 80, uh, um, 90, something wow, like that. Wow, that, that long ago. Wow. Yeah. I, I know it, why. I know I why. I understand if it was recent, but. I know why. Why? Because they had this play called The, the Black Gonorrhea. And it was what? uncomfortable. Oh shit, I wonder if anybody even knows them. About what? Yeah, it was called the Black Honoria. We were going to what uh was? what was we called, called that? To, we were going to Korea and they found it there and we didn't go. It's called the Black Gonorrhea. What it was it? it's, it's an uncurable. So if you get it, you stay mm -hmm. in the country that you get it at. And was nowadays maybe some people have like escaped, you know what I mean? So how did how did you get out? It should have stupid. See, if I, I ain't gonna lie to you, if I did get it out, be a Korean citizen right now. Dude, I don't even know how to spell gonorrhea. Oh, it's you, went to, you, don't want to know. you went to a Catholic school, they don't teach you like bad words like that. It's called super gonorrhea. Oh, whoa, now they made it super gonorrhea. That's like a super, if that's like a Chicago super rat, then man, it's bad. <laughs> We're in trouble, dude. What do they say about it? Nobody knew about this? No, oh, I never heard of that. Well, no, I, I guess it's I in, the black, in the black community. What? Black community said it? Yeah. It's on the rise, they say. Right now? I don't know when this was published. Oh my God. I thought black... everybody knew about this shit. Oh shit, now I'm spreading rumors uh, of it. <laughs> Maybe okay, that's why I heard of, those yo, questions. I heard about, about that. that. I'm not even sure it's true. <laughs> Maybe that's why they were asking them crazy questions. Dude, because yeah, because those days exactly <laughs> when it was going around 83 to 90. Wow. Yeah. What's yeah. about it? Does it seem like a bunch of questions it? like that? A bunch of questions with those dates. Oh shit. Okay. Yep. Well, ah, see, I shouldn't have said nothing. I'm in trouble, I bet. <laughs> Dude, if I hear a knock on my door, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Man, the good thing that I'm going to Alaska oh, next week. Hey, but that's got really good. That, but that's got context to what we're talking about because right. if you got all that, who wants to date in 2021? I mean, that's like a that's why I said it's like scarier than, it's scarier than zombies. Well, no, it's it's conceit, and that's the thing. You guys didn't know about that, and that's going around. And right, why didn't the government say, hey, you know what, we gotta be? But they say it's uncurable. Well, that's what we were told. That's it says it's uncurable. I mean, I'm, I does? think. Is gonorrhea uncurable? I have no idea. Oh, regular gonorrhea is curable. Uh, <laughs> how long did it take for you to get cured? Oh, about four or five shots. <laughs> Why they, take you rock? they don't let you leave the military when you got fucking shit. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I never had nothing. <laughs> 
All my um, women be pure. Ooh, baby. <laughs> you looked out there oh, too. No. Well, no, that's the other thing now. I mean, shit, I don't, I don't even know, like, you're, look, you got that that nobody even knew about. And I know about it. I'm, I, I was going to be like, I would be like, you know, then you got AIDS, you got black gonorrhea, you got uh, then the other minor diseases, which, you know, <laughs> minor you know, diseases. <laughs> minor one. Hey, I'm yeah, telling you, right? it's kind of silly. At least those you can get rid of, dude. <laughs> dude, I'm That'll... telling you, how could anybody think about dating in 2021 and be like cool with it? I mean, yes, sir. Like, I gotta put my ass out there and take the risk. <laughs> well, you got you big... gotta figure. I mean, you're a if you're a boomer, you're in your 60s, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, you're either getting divorced, your spouse could have died. Well, yeah, um, but I mean, and, yeah, and that's the uh, thing, like, you know, like I think like, well, maybe for like Juan's age, they're looking more at beauty. Like me right now, I'm looking for a partner. You know what I mean? Somebody's just to settle down. We don't have to have like any crazy, like, I mean, unless she wants to, right? What I was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't you please, baby. You ain't please. You know, but I'm just saying, you know, sometimes you're, I think when you get older, you're, uh, how do you call it? Your uh, preferences or uh, how do you call it? Maybe your oh. needs are different. Yeah, yeah, your needs are different. Yeah. You know, and I'm not but, speaking for everybody, but I know after being married for over 20 years, me and my wife are totally different. We're not the same. We have the different likes. We have different, you know, it's it's different. But we can does that make it more it. difficult or is it better? Because you know they say like opposite attracts. Uh, I think it's, I think it's difficult if you're not ready to be flexible and, and, um, take people for who they are. I think, we, I think that would make it difficult. I mean, we've had, we've had our ups and downs and disagreements big time, but at the same time, we've always been able to say, Hey, you know, I'm not, where am I going to go? You know what I mean? I mean, I'm either going to make it work or I'm not going to make it work. And I don't mean you just hang in there. I mean, I'm I'm happy to be with her. I trust her. I trust, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I couldn't see doing it. I, that's another thing. I can't see being with anybody else. It'd be weird. Yeah, that but seeing that, yeah, see, and that's a, that's a good thing. I mean, imagine somebody else out there that can't say that. <laughs> right, know? right. So, you yeah. know, they those lead in divorce or, you know. Yeah. No, I can't I say I'm unhappy. I can't say that. I'm happy, but I know I know where we both are different. Yeah. That's what's cool about it. Well, you I mean, you don't want to be with somebody that agrees with you all the time. I mean, that's well, I kind of wanted that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wanted that, but I thought that was gonna be the right balance. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah. yeah. And everybody who says this, man, this bothers me up. Oh man, it goes it's like it's like a hot iron going right across my back. Somebody saying, oh, I married my best friend. I didn't marry my best friend. I mean, I didn't marry my best friend. I would have married Victor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to treat, treat you right, baby. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I just never got that. I, I, the people say that saying, and they do it before the weddings and stuff. And I thought, nah, I didn't marry my best friend. I said, I married somebody I could trust, and I believe in, and I love. But, I mean, best friends. No, because we, we didn't know each other before. <laughs> I know yeah. her, you longer than her. That's right. In fact, um, in we've trouble. been married now. She brought this up. She said, we've been married now longer than, than uh, she lived with her parents, which was crazy. Oh, wow. That was that was a, that was like, a, wow, yeah, that's true, you know, kind of wild. But anyway, it is what it is. But I, I don't I I couldn't see Dayton this year. I, I mean, even my kids, I see them and I'm thinking to myself, ah, oh, how do they do it? I mean, if they were gonna date, two of them don't date, and one of them, you know, he's a magnet to chicks, I guess. He looks uh, like a hooker. <laughs> he looks like a hooker. He looks like he could be freaking what's his name? Uh 
What was that with Richard Gere? Um, uh, that movie. Richard Gere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Officer American and Gentleman. No, the the, the one the first one he ever did. American Gigolo. Yeah, American Gigolo. Oh, For those who don't understand what movie that was, you're probably, <laughs> you're probably I, I, half the age of that movie. I I I I like the American Gigolo, but I think the the movie that I liked uh, from you Richard like Gere was that was oh, Breathless. Was, oh, Breathless was a badass movie, yeah. dude. Most people, I have never seen it come on anywhere. It's, it's, you gotta, it's a great movie. Even just the music on it is great. Uh, ah, yeah, dude, and that chick, she is so That's fine. The with the Breathless. That's the one with the. The oh, I, have no idea I don't know the girl. girl I mean, was in, that was that was what's her name? Uh, oh, she was from uh, Louisiana. Blonde she's from hair. Louisiana. Hell no, she's she looked Russian. She wasn't from Louisiana with that accent. Hell no. Oh, the one with the one who married uh, what's his name? The Baldwin. Oh, yeah. Baldwin. Who's that? What's what's a, Baldwin. what's Baldwin? Yeah, she was she was Russian. Uh, oh, she was Valerie Russian. Kaprisky. Oh, I don't know. I didn't oh, see the movie. Yeah, in 1983. Okay, I got the movie. Oh, you got to watch that movie. It's a great movie. It, it even holds up. I seen it like uh, I seen it like five years ago again. I don't know where I saw it. Um, I wonder if that's out on Netflix. I have no idea. Oh man, that was a, I haven't seen that movie in 30 years. <laughs> I might have it. I have like, it's not in here. I got another room with just DVDs. I might even have it. Okay, but... look for it because I'll probably pick it up. <laughs> I'll buy it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go into the like, What was the name of the movie? Breathless. 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 That was a wild ass movie, dude. It's a, was... it's a great movie. It's a great movie. I think that was one of those movies that probably like, Nobody has ever seen. And I, I seen that movie because, you know, go to the video store. You don't, you know, I'm, mm. a, I'm like 11 years old. And, remember the uh, video stores? Oh, man. Yeah. And uh, remember having like a code? You need a number to get a, it's like, what's your number? Well, card. Yeah. <laughs> With the number on it. And they just get the number. Uh, yeah, that was that's crazy. Yeah. There's some that or are. Is it out on anything? You should look it up and see if it's playing on anything. Remember, people, breathless. Richard Gere, awesome looking chick, good movie. I'm not going to tell you the ending, but it's a good movie. All right. So you could watch it on, uh, you could watch on Movie Phone. Is that an app? What the hell is that? I believe. I guess you could watch it on Prime Video. Prime Video oh, has it. Uh, oh, if you have Prime? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, Amazon? Yeah, I guess. Should I think I do have it. Okay. <laughs> wow. I haven't, I haven't heard of that movie in a long time. I know. That was weird. Wow. That's crazy. Do you know there's I, still a Blockbuster open? I think yeah, there's only fun. one. I think there's one, one block. One Michigan, block. huh? In Oregon. In Oregon? Yeah. Oh, shit, I thought it was Michigan. Do you believe that? Yeah. Because now that thing's like a cult. They, they sell t-shirts, cuffs, everything, dude. Really? Yeah, everybody goes there just because it's the last black uh, blockbuster. It's a tourist attraction. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's crazy. Look at that. I know this without Google. <laughs> the guy that remembers dumb stuff right here. That's that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, Ray, right now, yeah. you're not married. You're looking for a girl. What are you looking for physically? Physically? Don't lie, you liar. <laughs> In my 50s? I know you're lying because you're thinking. Look at you're even red now. No, I'm thinking. I don't even know. Man, I don't know. You know. No, you don't know her? 
I, I really don't think it's going to yeah. be a, all looks. It's not going to be about, about looks, man. No, no, okay. okay, let's do this. You're a fantasy a, fantasy girl. Girl. <laughs> a big You're one. Fantasy girl. <laughs> <laughs> what? <clears throat> Your fantasy girl. How does she look? You're not married. You're single. And they say, okay, is the year 3020? And they say, Okay, you're here at the store. Pick out your chick. Yeah, I don't know if is it that easy. The three thousand twenty. I think so. <laughs> I. I, I ah, what should be See, tall? That's, that's the thing. I'm already. I just have. I don't. That's not something that I put in my mind. Or I know that that's would even that's start so, to think about. I just don't have the capacity for. It. But that's I the thing for me. Weird, man. I, I would probably say, oh, yeah, man, maybe, yeah, I don't even know, man. If I would have, I wouldn't be, I'd be lying to you, probably juicing you up, gassing up the, the conversation. But to be honest with you, I, I, don't, I would, really don't know. Really? I, mean, what, what, I'm boring, I, I wouldn't, right like. I'm boring right now, bro. I, I really don't know. No, that, that's the thing. I mean, right, we'd have to have that time has to lapse to get, you know, you know what okay. I mean? You, if you were single, like all of a sudden both of you became single, would you even look for a girl? Well, it depends. I mean, of course, everybody needs companionship. If I, got, I think once in a while, if I got after I got lonely and felt that, maybe I should look for something. Then maybe, yeah. But yeah. How I mean, long but, you, how long right away, I would be like, I'm still, I don't know what to do. How long but, do you like, think it would take you to be lonely? Like uh, two days or like 10 years? <laughs> No, I'm kind of the people think I'm a recluse. I'm not a recluse. I, I can spend time by myself. But I was like that since I was a kid. I could spend time with myself and have and, and be okay. Right. You know, there's times I there's times when I know that that it gets like, okay, I need to get out. I need to meet somebody. I need to go and okay, and, but and is there something. okay? Like you say you're a recluse. Is there a time? I'm not saying I am people th okay. People but just say, is there a time that you say, oh, shit, it's been five years. Fuck, I need somebody. Or, I need okay, you're talking five years down the road. Yeah, I probably would start looking. Yeah, you will. But that's the thing. Oh, you're, you're just saying, you know what? I probably wouldn't even look. You know what I would start doing? Probably talking to people I already know. Because they even said that you're not going to date out of your circle of influence. Most people don't date out of their circle of influence. So See, right now, I don't even have a circle. Well, you, you really do. You don't think you do, but you do. And that so means, yeah, it really does. That means that every, the, where you are in life right now is that that's, that's going to be the mode of, of view. That's what you're going to look for. You're hey, gonna well, look I'm just going to say this. Any women out there that want to join my circle? <laughs> <laughs> leave, a, leave a comment down yeah, below. Yeah, leave a comment. Leave a comment. Gonna, leave I a mean, comment and then we'll put you on what, 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 well, well, do a, like in a good fish if you don't hook up with this guy. <laughs> Fun loving. <laughs> Got his own house. He, he raises peach trees and <laughs> knows French. We oui, we oui, but do no. <laughs> That's Italian. So is it? That's German. That's German. Germany? Yeah. That's not German. <laughs> no, that's French. I don't know what that oh. is. I know French. French fries. French <laughs> dressing. <laughs> no, no, I, first, think... we, we, I know that's French. We oui, we. Oui. How about you, know? you Victor? What, what would you pick out right now? What would you go after? And see, okay, if it was me, if it was me twenty years ago or thirty years ago, no, no, no twenty years ago. Now, now you said now for yeah, now. 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 Look at now. Yeah. You know, I yeah. would want a person to look. This is what I would want. One, she's able to watch Animal House. Okay. Two, she's able to drink a beer. All right. Three, she's able to go outside and say, damn, this is nice just sitting next to you. That's it. So you, so you want John Belushi <laughs> to be your wife? Yeah, that's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> John Belushi's sister. Woo! <laughs>
So I, see, you didn't in all that you did not mention looks at all. Well, see, it's because that's the thing. I I don't think right now. But that, that's what I mean. Point, you get to the point where it's like I just want I want you know I want to have somebody that I can share time with. Right, 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 right. But but you know what? And she has to show kindness. She has to show you affection. Period. Like that's probably the number one rule. What's affection to you? This is another thing. See, people don't get. I think a lot of people will get some ideas that this per. Okay, I'm looking for this. I'm looking for that, and they think that person is has the same definition that they have, and that's where it gets like this. Okay, if women are if women are out there, I want to their definition of affection first. All right. So, any ladies out there are watching? Consider affection. Your definition of affection. We'll talk about it. We'll shout out your YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, well, that's another thing. I mean, just showing showing that she cared, like saying, "Hey, babe, you look good. Hey, babe, uh, let's go outside, have a coffee, and then maybe she just slapped you on the butt. I don't know, something like that." How about you don't? What if what if you don't look good? She tells you you look good. Oh, I want honesty. I don't want her. I mean. Well, if she's good in bed, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing. Please, well, let me make you feel cheap. The thing is, like, with me, you know, I, got, I got friends that are, you know, getting divorced now. You know, they're in their, they're 55, 60. And they have girlfriends that are in their thirties, you know, oh, yeah. and uh, oh, that one. and they're dealing with the issues that you deal with when you're just starting off a relationship like trust. And I I could I don't know if I can do that again. I know I don't want to go through that crap. I, I mean, there was, I mean, but see, I don't want to okay. go through my thirties and forties again. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to go okay. through. No, for I don't want to go through all that BS again. Okay, for both of you. Okay, now so you're saying, you know, I can't go through this. I can't do that. I'm willing to stay with this. No, okay, I don't want to. to live Not a that life? I can't. I don't want no, no. to. But are you willing to live a life, a life for the rest of your life with that person, even though you know that she doesn't like you? No. That would. You're right. No, I wouldn't want to do that. But But my wife loves me, so... Yeah, well, I know at because least she put up with the, so much of my. Sh yeah, she put up with a lot of crap. So yeah, I know. <laughs> or she would have been gone, dude. Well, maybe she, right now I would check her closet and make sure there's no suitcase. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, but honey, you'll see that no, in the closet. Oh, nothing. I love you. You don't know. You don't even know. You don't even know my wife. But when you come, you'll you'll be able to know. You'll get no, it. I mean, your wife, I tell you what, your wife, yeah, you better never let go of that. You're never. <laughs> fuck the bullshit. I would leave you. If you were my husband, I would leave you in a heartbeat. Be like, see ya. <coughs> Dude, oh, yeah, she's yeah. awesome, you know? She <clears> seems <throat> awesome. She's cool. No, but I mean, you, 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 I, I guess what I'm saying, like me, well, I'm divorced, people, so. Is it my fault? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'm always fucking up. Black sheep of the family right here, right here. You know, but I mean, you know, when you do it, you do it. Now, did I think about it? Yes. Did I think of what was gonna happen? Yes. Did it happen the way I was thinking? Hell yeah, it did. <laughs> First number rule, I'm going to talk about those that I wanted to get divorced. Number one rule. Can you live yourself, like, and not get into pity and not get into, like, oh, fuck, I fucked up. Can you live with yourself doing what you're going to do? Number one rule. Got to tell yourself, okay, I'm going to do this divorce. I'm going to break up. Everybody's going to hate you. Everybody's going to blame you. Everybody's going to leave you. Can you live with that without getting fucking suicidal, basically? 
can you live with that and say, okay, I'm going to do it. And I don't care what anybody says, it's a done deal. If you can live with yourself, do it. Because if you could do that, it's way beyond preparing. Yeah, but if you're already at that, if you're already in those. Yeah, if you're already in them feeling. Yeah. People don't know what actually happens through the pressure afterwards. Is but I believe it. I believe it. Oh yeah, but that's the thing. I mean, I believe it. People don't. People don't realize how you got to be able to live with yourself, no matter what. The easy part. I mean, the breaking up is brutality. But you live with the consequences. Ooh, just what just what you're saying. Just what you're saying. Exactly what you're saying. I don't want to. I don't want to go through that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to. Dude, but it's not I, that you don't want to go through it, but if you're at that point, you might have to. I I understand what oh, you're saying. So you for the rest of your life but, and, but and live in misery. Other part would, other part and you're probably going to be cheating but, anyway. Or let her go and hopefully she finds a doctor, you know what I mean? <laughs> Somebody better than you. <laughs> I'm so hurt. But no, it's, it's reality. It's reality. I mean, I, I know I'm I'm joking around, but hey, like, you know like, what, man? The people that go through divorce, I know it's tough. I've seen people go through it, and they de- they man, it's it's there's a lot of pressure there, man. I gotta admit, I see, it. I've seen it. Yeah, okay. but the thing is, you can't you can't say you're not going to do it just because of that. Because no, no, no. What I'm saying is, okay, I understand what you you you're mistaking mistaking what I'm saying. I'm saying that I know that there's anything you can you can refresh or whatever. If you can find refreshment, like you could say, hey, wait a minute, I know I know what I have to do to make this better. And then I do that because okay. instead of saying, well, I know what I can do to make this better, but I'd rather have this over here. <laughs> yeah. That's where I don't, I'm right. never going to be there. I got, I got, I'd rather. Uh, I got friends yeah, of sometimes mine. It's, sometimes it's just, it keeps going. Like, it's like, okay, I'm, it's like you're on a ledge and they push you and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm still far away. And then they push you and you're like, oh, shit. Then they put, and you're like, oh, shit, I got to make a decision or else my ass going to fall over the cliff. No, I get it. Yeah. I, I, well, I got, I got friends it. of mine that always ask me, well, how do you know? How do you know? Because they'll say, oh, you've been married for how long? And, you know, how do I know if I'm doing the right thing? You know, and you just, you never know. You never know. I can't give advice, you know. But oh. they were going, before they got married, they were going to, like, counseling like you know for and uh like a counseling the back sign right there they're going to constantly before they well, get- no, no, right. you can have marriage yeah. counseling before you get married man. right and they were doing all that stuff and i'm like well first of all that's a good sign that you're willing to do something like that because i probably wouldn't have done that right. you know um but if that's a good sign even though they did get divorced like two years later but whatever uh, see what i mean right see I knew it already. Yeah. Okay, like you, you, you really didn't date a lot. No, I mean, I, I, I met my wife at in college, and we were. Do you uh, regret? No, because we have it's life experiences. I've dated. I've had other relationships, and in actuality, I was a jerk to kind of other women. <laughs> and uh, I'm just saying. Don't you regret like maybe waiting another like five, six years and then? No, because in, in my mind, for me, I re- like I had, I remember like my dad, he was older. He did stuff with me and stuff, you know, um, but he was older already. He was, I was, when I was getting at age where, you know, everybody had their young fathers and stuff like that. Right. Um my dad was already like 50 something years old, you know? And uh, so I remember him trying to run, trying to, 
keep up and he, he couldn't. So in my mind, I wanted an early family. I wanted a family early. I knew I wanted to be a dad, um, but I wanted to be younger. Um, I didn't want to be that. So that, that was just me though. That was my, uh, your set of mind. My, yeah. So I, no, cause I, I mean, it's, I, it's, it's what I wanted. Um, and the same thing, you know, when I met my wife, it was, it was happy. I was happy. But do you like, like, do you ever say, Hey, I wish I would have done this one thing? That no. Cause if, you know, if it actually, if I, I do, because if I, I don't think if I ever didn't meet my wife, I'd probably be dead <laughs> because I was already, I was already making pretty good money and, uh, you know, working and yeah, you'd probably get me in a lot of trouble too. In college? Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure you would have got me in trouble too. <laughs> Not mom. Yeah. <laughs> I've never um, been in so, trouble in my life. Yeah. But no, nah, I don't. I don't have any regrets. You can't have any regrets. Why? Do you think your life would be like mine? No, no. no. Well, no. I we did party pretty good when I was. <laughs> do you, okay. Do you think you would have went down that that type of where I went, like the way I used to be? No, no, because we're different, and uh, you know everybody what does would, their. Well, what would have stopped you if you didn't have your wife? Well, that's that's the thing. You can't have any regrets. You can't know what it could have, should have. Right. You know. Oh, see, that's what I'm saying. Whenever you get, you gotta realize that. Hey, you gotta be able to say, "Hey, am I gonna regret this?" But you gotta yeah. live with it. Everything that happens, like I, I, I had a, I ain't gonna lie to you. My lifetime, I must have had like four or five big decisions that I had to make, and every single one would have changed everything i know they would have changed everything but you know i mean does anybody have anything like that, that well, they, you know, for me for me i have like a i read this book when i was 18 it was called think and grow rich did you read that book yeah and a mm -hmm. lot of people don't like the book i love that book that's i probably read it every other year oh wait you read a book yeah <laughs> Yeah, I read a couple books, but um, keep talking. It's a uh, it's a I book that every, it's it's a good book. You should. I mean, it's an easy read. You could read well, it. What is it? What is it about? Like, what's the main thing? It's 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 a book about um, you know. First, I thought it was a, about a book about uh, you know, getting rich. That's what it sounds like. You know? Yeah, right. Because that's you know, everybody wants to get rich. You know, but it's not. It's about making a choice making a decision making a good decision so if you make you know everybody wants to be a millionaire or whatever right but that's harder than it looks so if you make so if <laughs> cool is that which one is that one is that the well this is a, a the napoleon a, hill one yeah this is napoleon hill yeah but it was done by a, an author rewrote it that's all yeah because that's a thicker but, book that's a yeah this, this has been the, the one i read is like thinner <laughs> well, one, yeah. well, anyways like the basis Still the is, 13, it's the 13 principles to success that's right what it is. right and uh and now it, after you read the book you, it's not being rich about money it's being rich about happiness right, um, right. and you know being rich with friends being rich with um so you got to surround yourself with what you want. So you make a decision, you make a good decision, then you make a better decision, then you make another good decision. You keep making good decisions and it's going to get better. Um, right. But that's the thing. My, the time I fucked up on the first decision. Well, but that's my, my gift that I do is I watch people. I love watching people. I love to watch what people do, everybody. Um, and I learn from their mistakes so you mean by watching is like they're doing like in the store or watching them like walking well whatever their 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 life choices their life decisions and um and i'd see what people do whether they're close family or you know i learned from other people's yeah, mistakes but where, no but i'm talking have you ever been where you had to make a decision right now 
that would change everything in your life? No, because there's so many decisions and, um, you know, I mean, there's big, there's I had big a lot of those decisions. I, I mean, I've planned my, my children and. What? So, I mean, they're, you know, you know what I mean? Those are decisions, you know? I mean, if you look at it that way, I mean, they weren't like, you know, that's, that's every decision. They weren't accidents. <laughs> yeah. Even though we say our daughter was, but yeah, she wasn't. <laughs> we just mess with her. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, I mean, well, like even going into the military, that was a huge decision for me. Well, see, I did. Now you, I was going to go into the military. I was actually going to go. I went to South Chicago and I, I, I was going to be in the Marines. Right. I was, I was going to be on their wrestling team. I took the aptitude yeah. test and I didn't even have to do boot camp. What? Yeah, because I got the the aptitude test. I would have had to do like a a two week training because I was fit. I mean, I was I was well, you were physically fit, yeah. fit. and uh, I would have had to do whatever training they for their uh, for the wrestling team, like their. Um, yeah, and uh, I literally had to go back and sign the last papers and. I ended up going to college instead <laughs> and I, I went that route and uh that was a big that decision. was that right? was a big decision I still remember life. that I still remember you that you never would have been married if you would have went right that was a big decision what you uh 90 oh shit I would have been barely coming out if you would yeah been and uh, you were you were because uh and uh but then that's when I mean it would have been changed because the thing was there was no wars then no and oh, no. Uh, you would have went into the desert storm i would have went into desert storm because the, even though i was on the wrestling team a marines a marine they would have stopped and i would have had to go to boot camp what's the number one thing about uh, marines you're an infantry period yeah. your second it, your second mos would have been wrestling your first mos would have been infantry yeah so Everybody in the Marine Corps. I mean that was that was a big decision and that, that, that would probably be that was yeah that would be another uh where were you gonna be stationed at? Did they tell you? I For the idea. rest of them? No, I, I I was gonna sign the papers. I had like five days to sign the papers and I went to I went wow. to enroll in college and I didn't go. Wow. I, I, I kind of re I kind of regret regret that a little bit you know, yeah. i've always i've always wanted to serve but i didn't it's crazy see i joined just to get out of sashi kyle and get out of the house <laughs> but that's what people do but there you go that was... and i ain't gonna lie to you, I, joined, you just... I joined to get more discipline but they did it didn't work out that way well, I thought, just... okay, I'm going to join the Marine Corps to get more discipline, right? Nope. Made me more of a partier. <laughs> Shit, they party like a mofo, though, in the military. At that time, now, eh, now I think it's true. I'm, I'm sure they still party. But here's the thing. It's really knowing what you, it's, it's putting a goal before you so you know, okay, I want to go to the military, but what do I want to do in the military? What do I want to become? Instead of just saying I'm 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 getting in the military to run away from this stuff, it's that you have a goal, you got a purpose of why you're going in. No, and man, that's for you. Get out of there. <laughs> What's that? I went just to get out. Well, oh, no, I know, but I mean that's the way most of us make decisions. And that book, Think and Grow Rich, talks about how you make goals, how right. you how you live a purposeful life, so that you can that you can enjoy. Number one, the achievements that you did and feel good about it instead of just just being blown around by the wind. People who don't have goals been blown around by the wind. People who do have goals, you know, a plot. Now, I had goals and I was going along, man. I got shipwrecked, not because I didn't have goals, because I didn't know what to do next. And right. I didn't keep going. I didn't I didn't plan out even farther. And if I tell anybody to anybody today, I'll say, hey, man, if you. Plan, plan 35 years through your life. I've asked yeah. my kids, how many, let me ask you this, and this has nothing to do with dating, although it does, 
but if if you're going to, okay, where do you see yourself at 35 years old? I remember at 15 years old, I had a, I was walking from school and I thought, man, what's going to be like when I'm 30? But I had no clue. None. Nobody told me how to do goals. Nobody said none of that crap, man. That's not what, that wasn't even on my see, mind. But, I got, but that's why I joined the I military it was that reason. I was hoping they would structure me and mold me and, and it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, you think but see, that's the funny thing. We think other people are going to do it for us. Nobody's going to do it for us. We well, have to I, I was thinking, okay, we this is the military, and I heard, like, you know what? They tell you what to do, and they train you, and they mold you, and they make you. Like, yeah, I got physically in shape, the world's greatest fucking workout camp. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But did they send me, like, a, like you said, like, I thought, okay, they're going to, like, change me a little bit and make me more thinking about my future like you said they man do i got there the first week i must have gone to three parties i was like oh this is awesome but see they don't teach you that in school either they don't teach yeah. you about goals they don't teach you about they don't teach you hey what is your life going to be like when you're 30 have you ever wrote it down have you ever but, thought about it but it i think they taught more you more then than they do now now they don't even teach you anything you know what i mean now you're yeah. like People don't know how to do their checking. Don't know how to do anything. Well, it's, or, it's a different. It's a different world. It's a different. You know, but I'm saying you got a you got a you got a debit card. Yeah. No, but I think yeah, but I think if if everybody knew the basics, you know, it would change everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, but see, that's what I'm saying. You know, it's yeah. it's it's in, you, no one teaches you how no one teaches you how to live. They teach you get a job get insurance, get, you know, get benefits, get your, get your retirement. And then after you're done, you, you get to retire and you get to enjoy the rest of your life. But that doesn't, it's a, I'm not saying it's a well, it's a well, it's a well um, intended lie. Right. I mean, it's right. like, a, it's, it's like a well-meaning lie. It's, it's not going to happen that way. That's not how life works. Right. You know, you got to be going this way, and if, if this way doesn't work, oh man, you got to move over here and then veer back to where. But what's your end game? What's that thing you're trying to reach and 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 grab a hold of? For me, well, I think when I... be the opposite. They should say when you're 18, you take a test. On that test, it tells you like a, uh, like how much are you gonna make, and then for the next 20 years they give it to you so you go party crazy, and then when you're 40, they put your ass to work. That's yeah. I think that's. Yeah. For, I would be like, oh, yeah. for me, um, you know, everybody's got goals. And, you know, I plan on retiring in three years. Whether I'm just, I'm, but I'm still going to have to keep working. I'm going to, I'm going to find something see, else. But the thing but, is, I don't think you need to, I don't think you need to work on you need to freaking, you have the money and the capability, but I think you want too much. Well, but everybody needs goals. Everybody, I need, I still need, and, but okay. and, every, and every day, this is what I do every single day. Okay. So every day uh, I'm like, okay, did I, what did I do on YouTube? What did I do on eBay? Okay. Did I move forward? Did I do something to get me closer? As long as I did, yes, then I can go to sleep. And if I didn't, then I'll have to go do something. I used to do that with working out. I don't work out like I used to because that was part of it. But um, so now I, I don't really work out because I, you know, I don't, um, I'm tired. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, it's, the thing is, you're going to be, like you said, you're going to retire. And, and I know your ass can freaking retire comfortably and not work. You have yeah. to be. Yeah, but I can't. I, I I don't think mentally I can. And no, I, mentally, yeah. But I mean, no, but see, he's got a lot more to move than just himself. Now he's got two kids. He's got his wife. When he makes yeah, it, what, in, they in have three to years, be, are they all gonna? Any of them gonna be in college? Hopefully, they'll be done. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. So he's really not gonna have that, of, like what you call it, on top of him. Now, yeah, yeah. Well, they come and but, live with your dad. But I'm all, yes. in the back of my mind, though, in the back of my mind, okay, so now just say 52, 
and I got to wait till 62 to get Social Security. That number that I've reached from working right. just goes down. I need more years to put into Social Security. So uh, what you need uh, is you like right now, your pension, you use it for that period because you could take out after you're 55, right? Right, but I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried but, about. Well, the uh, thing is, see, that's I want that social security number. I want that social security number to be as high as. Right. But that's what you do. You 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 put in no, because that thing's still going to give you the same amount. It's just going to be the the longer you wait, the bigger the percentage. That's how it's going to be. So you're you're in between. You live off of that, and then you're able. But if you okay, make out. See, that's like. Remember Ray, that guy that used to work at the across the store, across the street from the liquor store, the liquor store. What liquor store? Across from Williams. Alzheimer's liquor. Alzheimer's uh, liquor. Yeah. Alzheimer's? Remember from that guy that he, he was working with them, that older guy, not Al, but the other guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like you. He's like, oh my god, you know, I'm gonna wait till I'm so and so to retire and get my thing, dude. He became fucking eligible like that day the next day he quit the next day he died oh i know i see people in the mill that do that all the time i see that too no i've but, seen uh, that too i mean yeah, i'm just saying dude if you got i know a lot of people think okay money 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 but a lot of times dude you gotta live you gotta, no, but that's the thing and and what i do it's not work so well i mean if you're gonna do ebay cool yeah i mean i, I believe in that but if you're actually going to say, you know what, I'm going to get a job, then what, why even oh, put no. a job? Yeah, no. Any any job compared to what I'm doing now, it's nothing. Yeah. So I'm saying, yeah, yeah, like that, I'm not like, oh, cool, because that's something that you like that you're able to do. But if it's like an actual job, no, it doesn't make sense, you know? Well, the, the key is, the funny thing is, is today, back in the day, it was it was own your own business. Own your own business, get out there, sell something, you know, on the corner, streets, roses. There's a guy that's on the New York streets and he does the potato peelers. I couldn't believe this guy. They did a little documentary on him in New York City. He sits on a plastic bucket. He gets a bucket of potatoes. He takes out his potato peelers, whoever the manufacturer is. I don't know. But he's over there and he's slicing them. He's like, these are great for you to make your potato salads, mom. This is great for making. And then he turns around. And he's like, yeah, you know, 450, 450. You want, you want two? It's X amount of dollars. You want three? It's X amount of dollars. Hey, they make great Christmas gifts. They make my great Mother's Day gifts. Hey, dad wants to do. He wants to be the grill master out in the. They make great, great Father's Day gifts. This is selling these things like left and right. He goes home. He's an old guy. He's, he's dressed up in, a, you know, not, not no, he's not in like the, the million dollar suit, but he looks, he looks decent, presentable. They, they, they follow him home with the video camera all the way to his, his nine East apartment, you know, upper, upper new. It's up there. He's got, he's got boxes of these things that he buys in bulk. Right. And he goes out and he sells them. Like that, man. And I mean, he's he's a multimillionaire, and that's all he's ever done. On the street, on the corner, nobody bothers him. That's it. You remember that that time, Victor? You got out of the service, and you were uh, you told me to go with you to go. Uh, um, somebody had a, a van, and he was selling uh, like the the funnel cakes. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you and you took me with you, and. Uh, Dude, I love that kind of stuff where people are and coming up and just I'm making just the funnel some. cakes and that's the hustle. That's what I want. So yeah. even if I'm doing that at 80, 90 years old and I die, at least I'm doing what you love, what doing. I love to do. I love the hustle. I love the that grind. I, that, probably, I think, dude, I think I could put a funnel cake place right in front of my house. Dude, and, and the sad thing is, I remember um Remember we had the store and we had the ice cream maker, the Raspa machine. Yeah. And uh, and on Labor Day, I would be out there and I'd be selling the Raspas for fifty cents, and I'd be, you know, great. I love. I mean, I love that stuff. And wow. uh, and I remember Dad would be like, "Oh man," he's like, "What else do you want to do? What else do you want to, you know?" And I'd be like, "Well, you know, we could sell T-shirts or whatever." And 
Oh, that was mine that he started charging me to put them up. I know. And, uh, but that's that the thing. That's, that's what I'm still doing. I'm still doing that. I'm still, you know. Because I would buy You know who I used to buy them from? Carmona. Oh, I remember the name. I don't remember the. Yeah, that's Ray. Ray knows him. Ray. Yeah. <laughs> remember? Yeah. Well, yeah, because he used to get a special little discount from this other guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's it. It's it's really I that's when I watch my kids go out and do do uh, lemonade sales out in front of the house, and then they come back. They were like, we made eleven bucks. You know, somebody just came and gave us five bucks for you know being out there. They they didn't even want any lemonade. They just wanted. To, I'm telling you, man, it was. It's like it's that. Just like you said, it's the hustle. And when I had my carpet cleaning business, it was like when somebody paid me, man, I felt like a million dollars. Like somebody did something for me. They didn't pay a company to pay me, you know, they paid me because they liked my work. And dude, that was the greatest feeling, the greatest yeah. feeling in the world. I, had, I, went, Go ahead. I, went, I went to a garage sale. That, this was like a couple of weeks ago. And, the, you know, the kids sell the lemonade in front of the, you know, the garage sale, you know. And uh, this one kid was like, hey, 25 cents for a cup of Kool-Aid, 25 cents for a cup of Kool-Aid. I don't know if it's any good, but it's only 25 cents. And uh, right then I knew, I'm like, oh, this kid's got it. This kid's got it. You know, so I bought a thing of Kool-Aid off him for, you know, I gave him a dollar. Oh, but, you know, it was Kool-Aid. It was good, but it was Kool-Aid. But just uh, that, just that little attitude that he I had. I haven't had no Kool-Aid in a long time, dude. I don't even, do they still sell it? Yeah, Kool-Aid. Oh, I haven't seen Kool-Aid packs in years. That's crazy. No, yeah, it's, it's like, I always used to sell stuff. I always used to have that, I don't know, that that money. I love money. You know? I, you know, I love money too, but I think I love selling or I love the, like I said, I love the hustle more than I love the money. Yeah, I think, see, and that's what I wish I had. If I would have had, like, if you... Like I taught Ray, dude. Come on, about that the money. That here's the thing. It's not about the money. It's that the money will help you increase your service to to touch more people, so that you can feel that way that your service is growing to more people. So, and I learned this. I learned it because number one, I was always going after money or my early adventures. I was going after money and never satisfied me. And I thought to myself, why is this satisfying me? And this guy gave me a great quote. Well, a guy said one time, he said, you know, you're, you're, it's not the, it's not the money that you want. It's the service you want to provide, but you want to increase in service because that's, what's giving you your, 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 your excitement because you're helping others get something that they want. And you're, you're there to be, you're just doing this, but you're exchanging for money because you have to get paid so that you could keep giving more service. Yep. And the greater you get at giving service, the greater the reward. But at the same time, you're you're expanding, uh, uh, you're expanding your reach to be able to serve more people because it's in service. Service is the number one value on this commodity on this planet. It's serving others. And when you can find out the way to serve people on a grander scale, then you're just going to have more, you're going to have more income, but that income now is going to help you be of more service to other people. That's why you see people go from having one McDonald's to five McDonald's. They want to increase in more service. Yeah, they're going to get more rewards, but at the same time, they're doing something that's a value to the marketplace because they're increasing more service. Yeah, but I think sometimes it's also that it's your idea and your, uh, well, you're yeah, you own it. Yeah, it's, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, but sometimes it's really but look at McDonald's wasn't created by his idea. McDonald's wasn't created by his idea. He wasn't McDonald's. Ray Kroc wasn't McDonald's. McDonald's was already happening before him. Yeah, I know what you mean, but he sometimes just saw a way to have it all over the all over the U.S. and all over the world. I mean, when you read his book, when you read his book, you'll find out. You'll say it says. He said that when he when he saw the McDonald's 
friend, the, the, the store, when he went to California, he said all he could think about was that. He said, man, these guys thought of everything. And when he put his head down the next day, when he was flying back, all he, all he saw was McDonald's stores all over the world. He said, that's what his dream, that was it. And guess what? He did it. <laughs> you yeah. know, he wasn't but the nicest guy, but he did it. He didn't have the money to do it. He didn't have the money. He didn't have the money. They were ready to take his house. Did you ever see the founder? No. Did I see the founder? Did I? No, hell no. I never saw the founder. You got to see it. It's, a, <laughs> it's all about Ray Kroc, man. I mean, um, let's say, let's give it a little bit of Hollywood, but there's a book called Grinding It Out, and it's even more detailed than the movie. But yeah, he, he didn't have money. In I'll fact, he was the, losing. I'll wait for the movie. What's the movie? It's already out. The founder. Oh, that's the name of the movie, The Founder? Yeah, that, that came out like, what, two, three years ago? Something like that? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, wow. I, I cool, didn't see it. Cool flick, dude. You got to see that flick, man. But, yeah, I'm telling you, it's, it's, um, it's really wild to be able to see how this guy thought his way through everything. And then the people that he really needed, they were right there when he needed them. It's like you it's, and me, huh? Exactly. Too wild and crazy kind of guy. <laughs> but dude, so, he didn't know how to, he didn't know what his, the guy who told him about this business, he said, you know what business you're in? He said, yeah, hamburger business. He said, no, you're not in a hamburger business. You're a real estate business. McDonald's is known to find the best prime real estate areas. That's why they build their stores in the best prime real estate areas. They don't buy it. They don't put them at where people ain't going to find them. They're gonna put it where exactly oh, where all the yeah. traffic, right off the highway. That's big money, right there. <laughs> huh? That's big money just to find the real estate. Exactly. But here's the thing: when you own a McDonald's thing, when you buy McDonald's franchise, you actually can own the building, but the land around it is owned by another company, a leasing company. You have to continually pay them leasing fees. Wow. Right? And guess who owned that? Ray Kroc. <laughs> so you're, just, you're actually leasing the place from Ray Kroc? From, well, from McDonald's Corporation, but the, but the leasing place part of McDonald's Corporation is who you have to constantly pay to lease the, the land around it. So they actually in, in those the, types they, of businesses, I mean, it could so, still be considered... Uh, McDonald's, it's just another subsidiary of McDonald's or something like that. But do they right, actually yeah. buy the land and then you just lease it, or do you have to buy the land and give it to them? Oh, when you buy it, you're buying the lease of the land, you're buying the building. But when yeah, you but pay who's them, buying the land? The land is already owned by McDonald's Corporation. Right, it's just like another company, another branch oh. of the company. It's a, a subsidiary. Oh, so they say, okay, we have this land, here's where you can put a McDonald's. Yeah. Oh shit! Really? Wow. Well, no, they just—it's it, another part of business. It's like, uh, right? Yeah, but when you die, so well, what does the McDonald's go to? The, it, to the next of kin. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, so you keep on downloading. Will, the, the the people that I know who own one over here in um, New Lenox, right? That that store started with Ray Kroc. The grandfather. She told me the story. The grandfather ended up having she he paid. $1,900, $1,900 to start the franchise. Before the franchise started, he was just taking the money for the idea. <laughs> you know, that you could, wow. yeah, you can own one of these. So he gave him $1,900. They ended up building, that's one of the oldest buildings started with Ray Kroc, right here in New Lenox. After they built that one, they paid it off. They still have to pay the, the, the leasing fees, right? But now... Everything else is, I mean, they don't own on the building. They All they have to do is pay for the buns, burgers, you know what I mean? But then, but everything else is cash. It's all, it's all liquid, which is beautiful. I mean, think about it. That's like, that's like, man, who wouldn't want that? That's like, a, right, right, right. You know, we're going to keep eating McDonald's no matter what, man. And then, hey, at let's build something for the kids. At least breakfast. I don't like their hamburgers. I don't. I don't eat McDonald's. 
Oh, me neither. Uh, I don't eat. I don't eat like uh, that kind I of food. food. But I'd rather have Burger King than McDonald's. But if I had a choice, I won't go to either. <laughs> you did have a choice. What fast food place would you go? None. I, I it's hard. It's I. I would. I probably wouldn't. What restaurant would you go to? I'll go to a restaurant. I'll take out. Um, you know, we'll go. I don't know. Some taco places, probably. Uh, What's a good taco place? Well, over here, there's a tacos and burritos I'll go to. There's a couple. There's like a little chain, but. Um, What's the name of it? Yeah, tacos and burritos. That's the name <laughs> of it? Yeah. Actually, and I found a new shrimp place that I've been going to. Hey, it's that's called... the best. But that's the best name to name something, man. Yeah. Look, I mean, I wouldn't call it. You know, this one, I can't believe this, the Mexican restaurant over here, Agave Azul, they call it. Agave Azul, I thought it was like, <laughs> I thought they had like furniture in there or something, man. <laughs> Agave Azul, what is it? You know, and then my wife said, oh, it's a Mexican restaurant. I said, what name is that? A Mexican restaurant. Now they got Mexican restaurant on top. I'm like, thank you. That's like exactly hey, what you need to say. How much, are, how much is an order of tacos where you go? Uh... Like ten dollars for the meal. For how many? Three. Oh shit! It's everywhere. It's ten bucks, huh? Yeah, but yeah, you gotta no. figure. You get three tacos for like six bucks. It probably cost them per plate. I would say two bucks, maybe a maybe a buck, maybe two bucks. Yeah, probably a buck. Yeah, probably a buck. They'll probably make more money on the soda or their drinks, but. Um, no, okay, they're explaining so. off, the, off the actual food. Mexican food is one of the least expensive food because remember, you get a dozen tortillas for 80 cents. No, uh, yeah, I'm sure that and you get it at cost. And, okay, so cheap. I got their prices here, man. What? Well, All right, a, I got a, a place called uh, Agave Azul. I'm going to say they're $18 for their meal, their three taco meal. Yeah, that's true. That's exactly $18? true. So the burrito agave, a bur burrito agave is nine ninety five. Okay, that That's better be a big ass burrito. Ten, man. Inch flour, ten inch flour tortilla filled with grilled steak and grilled chicken, onion, tomatoes, topped with cheese, dip salsa, rice, and serve. Uh, uh, oh, serve with rice and beans. It's nine ninety five. I don't know how that guy got me free. Huh? How much is the regular burrito? Just, uh, just the burrito, the plain burrito, no, no eight, no uh, side dishes. No side dishes. Yeah, just the burrito. Burritos. Okay. Uh, they probably don't even sell it like that. They don't. What kind of full foodie place is that? It is. It's it's a higher end. You know, they oh, need burrito that. suizo, burrito gave, burrito vegetarian. They don't have like just a regular, but they're like eight ninety five to nine ninety five. Yeah, just the same burrito. What the fuck? That's not God, bad. You get a burrito here for like three bucks. Yeah, but here's what I'm saying: is that I can't believe this guy got me for eighteen dollars for the stuff I ordered. Okay, arachera, fifteen ninety five. That's cheaper than what you got. I'd rather get arachera. <laughs> <laughs> grilled steak served with rice beans grilled uh -huh. onions in fact you know what i'm gonna go order right now <laughs> <laughs> i want to get back at that. dude that's cheaper than a burrito how the hell is that i don't know how many how, it's probably one thin slice of arancheta huh dude i'm telling you i couldn't believe how high it was eh? oh yeah it's it, it's grilling season it's it's a lot here i can get i can get a I could get three tacos, uh, rice, beans, Coke. It'll probably come out to eight bucks. Wow. Man. You know, we've been getting but, take. All we're right. 20 for fucking we've been going hey, over an hour and a half now. Really? Oh, oh crap. Doesn't even feel like it, innit? it? No, it's good. No, it doesn't right, feel like it done? at all. I'm better than last week. <laughs> Hey, no, are no, we done? Are yeah, you recording? Done. No, I'm still recording. 
but I'm just going to end it here. Because, yeah, I'm going to uh, give a I'm going to give a shameless plug if anybody's watching yeah. till now. <laughs> right. What uh, check out my channel, Retired and Reselling. Yeah, and, Retired uh, Reselling. I'll put the link below in the description. Awesome. Yeah, I changed the name. I kind of like this one a little better. I figured. Yeah, that's good. I like you know, it too. I, I only got five subscribers, so if I can get to six, that's my goal. Six. That's how. That's how small my goals are. See, you know, and I just keep going. And I'm not worried. I'm not worried about seven. I'm just. I just want six. So, if you're exactly. listening, like and subscribe. Thanks. Right on. Well, yeah, hey, I like to get a plug out also to all the beautiful women single out there that want to mingle and be single with me. I want to start a, a circle of life with my women. Hello. If you're or you're single and just want to talk, put something in the comments below. Ring the bell. Don't freaking forget. Ring the bell. Subscribe. Or bring you good luck. <laughs> we want to show Victor's consolation prize um, for being single, but yet he tries. We're going to be giving him this uh, iPad so he doesn't drop it anymore when he goes and does his videos. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. So you got to come. Later. Bye guys. Thanks guys. All right. All right. All right.